Hello and welcome to another edition of New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. This is Ian Stark for New Blue. In this tutorial and in several more to follow, we'll be looking at some of the exciting new features you're going to find in Titler Pro version 2. To start with, we're going to explore the new texture and bevel features which, when I first saw them, made me giggle like a six-year-old on Christmas morning. So let's dive straight in and play with our new toys. Just so you know, I won't be burying the description of these new features in all singing, all dancing examples of Titler Pro projects. I'm actually going to be using fairly simple examples throughout this tutorial so we can focus on the good and ignore the glitz. So first up we have the welcome new edition of Bevels, which you'll find in the Style Settings tab. This rather uninspiring solitary character needs a bit of a spruce, and all I'm going to do is add a bit of extrusion, obviously you can't bevel a 2D surface, and then using default settings I'll increase the bevel size. It's as simple as that. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the resulting bevel. As you may have guessed, these are Bezier curves, which we can adjust by grabbing and moving the handles like so. And you can immediately see the bevels now conformed to the new template. If I right click on the bevel template, it brings up several line style choices. Linear for straight edge bevels, single curve for a nice round edge, and double curve if you want things a little more ornate. We can also add a bevel to the backside of our characters, simply by putting a check mark in the Include Backside box. Finally, shininess adjusts the material to reflect the scene's lights to a greater or lesser degree. This goes very much hand in hand with the parameters of the new Scene tab, but for now, if I choose a nice deep colour and adjust the shininess, you can see how it affects the material, in particular, the highlight on the bevel. And if I rotate the character, it's even more obvious. We'll look at shininess and setting a scene's lighting in a forthcoming tutorial. Finishing up on bevels, I'll also add that they can be applied to any 3D layer, including outlines. If you're upgrading from a previous version of Titler Pro, you'll have noticed the addition of a new 3D face type, Gloss Face. Gloss Face is a preset style layer that already has a gradient with some transparency applied. So if you put this layer on top of one of your other layers, it gives your style a glossy look. It works best if the layer below it has some texture to it, like this example. Right, let's start another new project with a single character on the screen. At the risk of being accused of living dangerously, let's change this to the letter S. There, I've done it. Conformity be damned. So now let's take a peek at some other style features. Gradients gets a new makeover. You can now choose from a number of colours and have either a linear gradient or a radial one. These controls are so easy to use it almost doesn't bear explaining. But suffice to say, you can adjust the position in the gradient where each colour starts and finishes, the blending parameters, the colour and the transparency. As an example, I'll create a three colour linear gradient with red at the top, orange in the middle and yellow at the bottom. I'll decrease the influence of the red by clicking on its control point and dragging upwards. Now I'll reduce the merge between yellow and orange by dragging the yellow falloff control point up. Notice that you can have hard edge gradient changes as well, although I guess they'd no longer be called gradients. Finally, I'll rotate the gradient around so it sits diagonally. If you want, you can introduce a transparency into your gradient so whatever lies underneath will show through. Ever so simple and ever so effective. Right, that's the new gradient features for you. I'm going to start a new project now so we can take a look at another very useful tool, the Texture, Move and Size tool. Here's our paragraph and here's our texture. Those of you already familiar with Titler Pro will know that the green bounding box indicates that we can manipulate a paragraph. If I click on the Move and Size Texture button, you'll see a red box appears, and by dragging that box around, I can manipulate the texture. By grabbing and dragging these handles, I can change the texture's size. Remember, corner handles adjust the size proportionally in all directions, 
Center handles adjust the size either vertically or horizontally. When you're done playing with your texture, click on the little hand again to return to normal editing. And finally, a very exciting new feature that will really open up your titling possibilities. You can now use video as a texture. You apply it in exactly the same way as you would any other texture, and you can use the Move and Size tool to shift it around or resize it to taste. Don't forget, you can apply a texture to the whole paragraph or to just one or more characters, just like you would with a still image. You can even use video with an alpha channel. My word, I hear you gasp, when will it end? Well, as far as this tutorial goes, it ends here. There are many more new features in Titler Pro 2 to tell you about, but for now, I hope that's whetted your appetite until our next tutorials, when we'll look at other goodies such as custom lighting, the wide-angle lens control, EPS import, and much more. Until then, this is Ian Stark saying thanks for watching and for learning a little bit about New Blue FX, Titler Pro version 2.